I'm like, if, if I give away all that I have, if I deliver up my body to be burned, but I have not loved, I gain nothing. First Corinthians 3 3. I, I do the tithe, and here we got the phone number and, and the email for Zell online giving. And we got my wife in the back of the envelopes. She'll walk around with the basket. But if we do it all without no love, it's, it's really counts as nothing. We give to further the kingdom of God. We give to give opportunity for other people to hear the word. And I'm going to pray today that God gives you the opportunity to give with a loving heart and give much. And even if you can't give, give beyond your needs. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for everybody that's in this church that's giving with a loving heart. That they would give on to your kingdom and see the bigger vision of your people that need to hear the word. Father God, thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Come on. And now, straight out of this very California, my brother, my friend, my compadre. My homie, Eli. Reverend Eli. There we go. Come on. Through the Holy Spirit, He puts in our lives the discernment and knowing that God is leading us in direction. That's all this is speaking truth. Some of those Thank you for this opportunity. That you come up and share. Amen. Amen. It's actually getting warm now. <laughs> I don't know how Pastor does it for 40 minutes. He'll have the coat on. Look good while he's doing it. It's a little messy. Worship is great, so I'm going to heat it up. Mm -hmm. Good morning, for those of you who don't know, my name is Brother Eli. Today I have the honor and privilege of sharing God's work with the church. Come on, brother. And for the past month, we've been talking about love. Love in different ways. Love in different um, um, faucets, but you know, different ways that we can express love, receive love, love others, love ourselves. And I was talking to a friend last night, and he mentioned a word that I feel, without it, our love, the love that God gives us, is just ordinary love. But there's something special through God's love for his children, for his people here today, that we get to receive, that most of the world doesn't. And that's mercy. Mercy. It's such an incredible gift given to us through God. Mercy is what forgives us of our sins. Mercy is when we feel at our lowest and we feel that we are not good enough. We are given mercy by God saying, no, son and daughter, you are. Because I love you. Not because of anything you have done, but because I love you. Mercy is very important in a relationship. Forgiveness, mercy. See, when I think about mercy, I think about relationships. I think about the change that we go through in relationships. And, and this season of February, you know, for some, it's a season of new love, young love, gifts, chocolate, flowers. Which, if you're young out there, this is the time to buy the chocolate because it's just going to be so don't it. So, it don't matter if it's green, just go get it. That's what I think I'd say, but this is the time to get back. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. But for people who are seasoned, for people who have been in relationships, who are currently in a relationship, there's more to love than just gift giving. 
of the material sense, but you give your heart. We give our time. And we need to give mercy. We need to be able to forgive those that we love. And sometimes offenses are huge. Sometimes they're not. I don't know where in our lives those thoughts fit for everybody. But what sets us apart is we have the opportunity to be merciful and forgive. You see, God wants to be in a relationship with us. And in that relationship, we are the lesser of the two. God is perfect. God is powerful. God is love. God is promise. God is everything. So if God is perfect, anything else is not. And unfortunately, that's where we fall. That's not where we stay, church. You don't get to that. It's not where we stay, but it's where we fall because God is perfect and we're not. Yet he still wants to be in a relationship with us because he loves us. And though we're coming to him dirty and broken, he is so merciful. That's right. And he forgives us. He cleans us up. Mercy is that act of forgiveness saying whatever you've done is okay. Amen. Come follow me. And then we get grace. Those are the blessings that come after. And grace is beautiful. It is powerful because you get to live that. You're saved by grace. Amen. Amen. But it starts with mercy. Our God is a God of second chances. Amen to that. Amen that our God is the God of second chances. Because how quick are we to deny someone a second chance? How quick are we to deny ourselves a second chance? Because mercy goes both ways. We need to have mercy on ourselves because God has mercy on us and has forgiven us. We need to remind ourselves that when we're called the kingdom of business, it's not our doing, it's God. God sees the potential in us. God knows where he wants us to be. We have mercy from God and we didn't deserve it. Church, a hard truth this morning is we don't deserve God's mercy. We don't. But it gives to us anyways. And not just a little. He gives us all mercy. But mercy needed to be paid. And it was. It was paid by his son who walked the earth and was merciful to everyone he encountered. Who died. Sorry. Let me go back. Who was tortured and died for our sins. And when it was finished, he had that blanket of mercy. Always. He didn't deserve that. But God loves us so much, he sent his only son to die so that we can have eternal life and kingdom of heaven. Those aren't just words in the book, it's a promise, that scripture, that's reality that we hold on to. God's love and mercy endures forever. First Corinthians 13, 7 says it like this. Love bears all things. <coughs> Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And that love, that scripture, spiritual love that God gives us, the core of it is mercy. You can see it in the Old Testament, man falling short. You can see it in the New Testament. We can see it in our lives today. We're all going to fall short. <clears throat> I get carried away with singing during worship. <laughs> so this morning, I want to talk about mercy for ourselves, for others. And I do want to apologize right now because when working on this initially, it was meant to continue with love. You know, it's the season of love, February, we're all happy and it's great. And when I started looking into mercy, I started getting angry at myself and angry at the idea of mercy because I realized, man, I'm not being merciful like God calls me to be. I'm not demonstrating mercy like God calls me to demonstrate. And I'm acting like a fool thinking that I can love myself and love others but without accepting mercy from God. So this morning, I want to talk about mercy. And I'm mainly going to be in the book of Luke. Chapter 14, the story of the, um, the Great Banquet Parable. We'll get to that. But I'm going to be pulling scripture from other verses because this whole Bible is filled with scripture about mercy. How do we align ourselves with God? How to be merciful because He's called us to be merciful. The verse that stuck out with me this week was Matthew 5 7. Blessed are the merciful, 
for they shall receive mercy. Let us pray. Dear God, this morning I just pray that I am a vessel for you, that I am a tool used by you, and that your words, your truths come out of me, God, because we're here to worship you. We're here to celebrate your truths, God. I pray for the children's ministry in the back, all those here in attendance, God, that we are just fed with your word, that we are filled with your Holy Spirit. We love you. We thank you. And your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> so, Jesus in the book of Luke tells a parable about the great thing. And it's Luke chapter 14, verses... Sorry, it's a little long. So it's verses 12 all the way down to 24. So I'm going to give you just a highlight up to the verses that I'm going to discuss. Great story. Highly recommend you read it. It's beautiful. And it really fits in the theme of mercy. So Jesus is talking to his disciples. And he's talking about a parable of the banquet. And inviting everyone. Inviting people who are poor. Inviting people who are in need. Not just friends and family. So the parable goes that... This man is throwing a party, and he invites his friends and family, and each one has an excuse for not going. Close to people, they have an excuse for not going. Some are bigger than others. I need to tend to my land. I just got married, and whatnot. So the man who's hosting the banquet is starting to get upset. So he tells the servants, go out to the streets and invite the needy, invite the poor, invite everyone to come enjoy this party, and they all, they all show up. Which brings down to verse 22. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and there is still room. And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and the hedges and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited, the people who had excuses, shall taste my banquet. Mercy is a gift given to everyone in this world. Jesus died for all of our sins, and he's extended that blank blanket of mercy to everyone to come and claim it. But sometimes in situations in our life, we doubt it. We may not say it out loud, but we can doubt his mercy on us by getting lost in a situation, by getting busy with things that aren't given tasks. Now these men had good reasons not to come to the banquet, but they weren't godly reasons. They got distracted. And mercy's for everyone because there's people out there who need mercy. Who need mercy. And Jesus encourages us that we can, it says in the beginning of the chapter, we can invite those that we call friends and best friends and family if they return that favor and show us mercy. But be weary because there's so many more people out there who need mercy. So I think about mercy as a standard. And I feel that this is a reason why people can get lost. Because some people think mercy is I do for you, you do for me. Or it's really hard to love certain people, so I'm just going to show a lot of mercy to those I care about, because it's easier. We can invite people to a pretty banquet, but they may not show up if they don't have mercy in their heart, too. And if at that moment we're being the example of mercy in their lives, we need to be merciful to everyone. See, God's forgiveness, God's mercy, is based on His standard, not ours. And His standard says, show mercy to everybody. ourselves. We can get lost in self. We can get lost in trying to get things done our way. And when we do that, when we put anything else before God, we're forgetting that God showed us mercy because we're not perfect. Church, this morning, none of us are perfect. That's right. And what a beautiful thing that we all have that in common, that we fall short. That we have trials and tribulations and pain. But God will still show us mercy. God still loves us. And we will come to Him. And we can pray. And we come to God and we proclaim the truth. He will show us mercy every time. See, we're not built for independence. We're built for interdependence. That means to be with others, to communicate, to grow. Jesus didn't just pick one disciple and have him do all the work. Jesus didn't just do it all himself. We as a church, we as people, when it comes to mercy, should remember that it's not a solo job. 
to show mercy, to accept mercy, you need to be in a community with people you can trust and love to show mercy to you. First and foremost, God is going to show you the mercy. Be in His Scripture, be in His Word, and you'll receive that mercy, and then it grows. It doesn't just stay. So I think about self. And in that time, I forgot that God has mercy on me. It's easy to remember God loves us and that we're forgiven of our sins and all these truths of the Bible, but more so, God has mercy on us in our lowest of lows, when we are tired and weary, when we are being disobedient because we're putting ourselves first, God still has mercy on our lives. And sometimes that mercy is in the form of discernment, meaning, hey, brother or daughter, breathe. Sit. Eat. Disciples always found time to eat, amen? That's not gluttony. That's God saying this is the important time where we rest to strengthen ourselves. Now we have the Holy Spirit in us, so we don't have to grow weary when it comes to kingdom business. But physically, we can grow weary. And sometimes when we're weary and we're putting other things before God, thinking that we have to stack them up for ourselves, we can get tired and start getting hard on ourselves. It's not in my notes, by the way. Um, Holy Spirit kind of spoke this on me this morning. Was, for no one in the room, I apologize, but if there's anyone online who needs to hear, breathe. Rest. God has mercy on you. God loves you. God is not in the business of wearing us out. God is in the business of strengthening us because He loves us. He loves us so much and He treats this relationship with such reverence that He doesn't want us to burn ourselves out. He gives us mercy. I knew who you were. I know where you are. And I know where you're going to be, son or daughter. Come on. Breathe. My mercy will overflow in you. And when you accept that, you start getting the grace. You start doing for me. Like Brother said earlier for Ty, you know, if we're doing these things out of ritual and there's no love, then there's no point. Paul talks about it all the time. We do for God because he's done for us. We're merciful to ourselves so we don't get burned out because God is merciful to us. So a question I was asking myself this week, and I'm going to ask you all in attendance, you don't need to answer that. Do we forgive ourselves and others the same way God has forgiven us? Do we forgive ourselves in times the way God has forgiven us? And don't get me wrong. This is, I'm not trying to promote continued sin. No, 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 no. If it's sin and you know it's sin or there's a situation that you know is wrong, don't do it again. Especially if God has turned into you that it's not right. But we all get tired. We all physically Spiritually, we all get tired, and it's important to take those moments of rest. The purpose of the Sabbath was to rest and to be in God's presence. God is so merciful all the time that He's waiting for us to just come in. Yeah. Now, today, here on earth, through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Spirit. So we have immediate contact with God and His mercy right now when we get on our knees and pray. When we take that step back and stop judging ourselves so hard, stop being so critical, put ourselves on a standard, when we just the only standard we have is God loves us. Through His mercy and grace, we're saved. Through His mercy, we are made new and we are forgiven. Which means we can focus on the path that God has for us now. Amen. If we're in this room, we are blessed with mercy. If we're alive in this earth, we are blessed with mercy. Because God has more for us. And God bless the ones he's called home because their race was done. But we're here today. For mercy, forgiveness, and grace, church. That's ultimate love for our God. That our God has for us. He sees it in us. Because he loves us.
that's the easy part, right? Mercy for self, taking a breather. God, thank you for your goodness. But there's something that a lot of us face on this earth that sometimes can be near impossible. This is what I want to focus on today. And that's having mercy for others. Ooh. My wife jokes. Uh, she's like, I hate the F word. Forgiveness. Mm. Not anymore, but it's a joke that we used to have. And it's hard to forgive. For example, I have a friend in the front row. And if we're walking and he accidentally steps on my shoes, I'll be like, oh man, you stepped on my shoes, he'll say sorry, I'll say sorry, forgiven. Not a big deal because I love my brother in the front row. But what happens if it's a stranger outside who steps on my shoes? How quick am I to forgive him? What happens if it's a guy across the street who comes running and jumps on my shoe just to run around? <laughs> Now, it sounds ridiculous, but think about driving. People that cut us off every day. I will never see it again, but for that moment, we were so <laughs> mad and angry. Well, maybe it's just me. I'd be listening to, to oh, I don't want to say the station, but uh, Christian music. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, praise God, praise God. And I'm like, oh, and I turn into something that I'm not. Mercy is out the window because now I'm in. And that can happen to us with people. Ephesians 4.32 be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Trust me, God sees you through your trials and tribulations. God sees us when, that's a nice way to say this, if we feel that we're being overwhelmed with our situation and people, have mercy as God sees us. He knows. He's the God of us. And sometimes God will use people to strengthen them too. Come on. So don't count every situation that we are, or we should not count every situation that we are frustrated in as a situation where we can't be merciful. Forgive. Because we love God with all our might. We put Him first. And then it says to love your neighbor as yourself. You love yourself completely when you put God first and you start seeing your worth that you're meant for keeping your business. Come on. And that's a blessing. Because ourselves on our own, rough. Uh, maybe I'm speaking to myself. Rough. But through God, we are of a royal priesthood. Anointed, standing, doing His will. Not perfect, but doing God's will. That's an amazing place to be in. But that's our brothers and sisters, too. So we need to be merciful to those around us because we don't know if we're being the example for God at that moment of what mercy is or if that person is placed there or doing something according to God's will. Because God sees all our lives today according to his eternal perspective. I read that. It blew my mind. Because it's easy for us to have tunnel vision in our situations with mercy. I can be merciful to this person and not that person. I argue with myself sometimes about the logic behind that. And I break it down to if God can be merciful to everybody, and Jesus calls us to love everybody, then what excuse do I have not loving my brother and sister? Sometimes I'll try to ignore them and do my own thing. But there is no answer to substitute kingdom business for our own injustice. When we think we're wrong. The eternal perspective of God's perspective, like when he was talking to Job, there is so much going on in our heads. So we just call it to be the example of mercy to others. Now, we don't want to run the risk of just being merciful for the sake of being merciful. Oh, I forgive you, and I walk away, and I'm still making bad thoughts. That's not mercy. Or I'm going to put this mask on, right? Smile and act this way in front of you. And the second you're gone, my real emotion show. It's not mercy. Come on. Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus invited in the sinner, the tax, the tax man, the prostitute. Jesus even had mercy on the Pharisees. Because at those moments when they were trying to contradict him, he could just snap his fingers and keep him in the But he still gave him a choice. And the chance. 
person on the, street, on the street or a friend is so hard and we got to dig deep down inside and see what pain is really keeping us from the business. Right? Pain of self or loving others. There needs to be mercy. God wants a relationship with us because our relationship with him, our fellowship with God is our most it's a powerful testimony. That's right. God's, or, uh, sorry. Uh, pastor talk for all the time. You know, what, what's the purpose of a testimony? Someone goes on stand in front of the judge and speaks their truth. So many rules, you know. If you lie, you're going to get in trouble, you're going to perjure yourself, you're going to do this and that. So they really stress that you have to speak your truth in front of the people in front of you to convince them or to tell them of your experience. And as Christians, our testimony, the mercy that God has given us is powerful. But what happens when we're just talking the talk and not walking the walk? Philippians 2 4. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. We can get lost, as I said, we can get lost in what we deem justice and injustice. Oh, you cut me off, you're a bad person. You're not going to listen to me talk and talk over me? Oh, man, it's. You did that sin against me, brother and sister? That's unforgivable. I'm going to walk away. You can't, you know, you, the list can keep going and going. You start silly, but when you really, when we dig, dig deep in ourselves, we start realizing that there's hurts out there based on our version of justice. I was hurt, so I cannot forgive. That's not biblical, church. Jesus didn't make exceptions on what to forgive. He just said forgive. Jesus doesn't make, God doesn't make exceptions on who needs mercy and who doesn't. We all have it. Who are we to think that our judgment is bigger than that from the perspective of God? Nehemiah 9, 17 is talking about this. They refused to obey and were not mindful of the wonders that you performed among them. But they stiffened their neck and appointed the leaders to return to their slavery in Egypt. But you are a God ready to forgive, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And you did not forsake them. How easy is it to fix our time and walk away? Giving someone mercy. How easy is it, is it to see people that we know, friends and family, and we can give them mercy, but people we don't know or people we don't like, we withhold. Jesus is the fact that we need Everyone comes. We're all hungry in need of mercy this morning, church. It's true. We all need that forgiveness of God, and we need mercy. God wants to give us mercy. God has given it to us. I want to love. We need to love God first. And I want to celebrate a relationship. We need to celebrate the relationship we have with the creator of the universe. Come on. Amen. Because he's given us so many gifts that we do not deserve. He loves us. And we can do different things with that. We can talk about this next Christmas. He can give us those gifts and we can leave them unopened. Just sell them. Keep them out of the way. We try to do our own thing. Or we can open them, accept them, allow them in our lives. When we do that, we start to change. Some of us here know today, um, a relationship should change you. For better or for worse, a relationship should change you. You should not be the same person going in as you are coming out. Or, God bless you, you're able to stay in. You should be changed as the years go by. We talk about it in Ecclesiastes, the season of life. Beautiful. The ups, the downs, the strengthening, the hardness, the changes. 
When we walk with God, we accept His mercy in our lives, we change. Our heart changes. When we put God first, follow Him and allow His mercy to come upon us, we start changing so it becomes easier to forgive others. Because we're using His mercy, not our own. If we're in a situation that we don't feel God is changing us right now, or has changed us, and I pray we get on our knees and we confess and we, we come to God because our walk here is ever changing. And this uh, mercy itself is not something we can master. In fact, it'll take the rest of our lives because there'll always be opportunity for the enemy to try to knock us off and not be merciful to God is eternal. God is always. He says, when you put my mercy first, when you allow me to leave, you're going to have it. I'm going to do it for you all. So we must show mercy to others as we do ourselves. Like I said, mercy begins with God. We get that count by the way we act, the way we present ourselves. In church, I'm going to say this up front too, and I've said it before, but they say never judge a book by its cover. Then why do they put covers on books? If you're standing in a way where you don't seem like you want to talk to somebody, it's going to give off a message. Come on. Right? Come on. It's a fun one too, okay? What would you rather listen to? This? Or someone who's here paying attention? Who would you rather want to befriend and trust? Someone who is saying they care about you, but they turn their back and talk about you the first second they got? Or someone who's standing in their way and saying, brother, sister, I may not agree with you. I may not like what you're doing right now, but I'm looking at you face to face so we can talk about it. Come on. Because God is there always in the midst of our trials and tribulations. No matter what we are going through, when we think we're alone, God is there. Mercy itself is a choice. We choose it. There are some out there that don't choose it. They live in darkness. They live in anger and hate of self and others. God is still there. God is there always. But God gave us choice. He doesn't want us to be these obedient slaves. We're not Slaves, the way the world says we're slaves, we're mindless and we don't know what we're doing and we're brainwashed. No, church, we are not brainwashed this morning. We know the truth of life, that God is good, that he is the creator of the universe, that he sent his son to die for our sins so that we can have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. It is not man that we put our faith in. It is not situations. It is not our work. It is not our job. It is not even our loved ones that we put our faith in. We put our faith in God because he is always and forever. Amen. We are covered with that blanket of mercy in all that we do. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves that. Right. When we have that attitude of what we do, we have the opportunity of our testimony of mercy impacting others. We get to be that example. Because there's some people in this world that don't know what mercy is. We have gone through things that are hard. But we're not being good brothers and sisters if we come into their lives not being an example of mercy. The mercy that God gives us. And we run that risk of pushing people away. Our actions are so important of what we do and how we do it. Straight up, we must forgive others because God has given us. The book of Matthew 5, 23 through 24 says this. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. So I don't want to confuse people this long. God gives us discernment. If we see a brother or sister, maybe there's something going on. And you need us, you need a word, a reminder of the good word of God. We are called to go to that person. Amen. We are called to 
be there and love on them because God loves them. But make no mistake, church, do not substitute the truth of God for someone's situation. Come on. You see that too much in the modern world. Yes. God's will is true. What he says is true. His plan is true. And we know it's true. And we can't act like we don't know it to make someone happy. That's not what Jesus is calling us to do. He's calling us to forgive and love them. Because when we do that, Jesus is going to open an opportunity to preach to them, amen? Yes. There's a rule in ministry. Never say never. Come on. You want something to happen? Then say I'll never do it. It'll happen. That's, just, that's just something that, that I've learned recently. Never say never. The second you put your foot, foot down with a hard no, God's going to say, door is open, I'm pulling you in. Yes. So in those situations, church, when you have someone who's in need of mercy, make sure that we are giving them mercy and love through the lens of God, yes. not ourselves. Yes. Whole other sermons. God, God centered, God first, for that person. Yes. If we struggle to forgive, remember who forgave us. <clears throat> if we are struggling with how to forgive. Just look around us. God's activity is everywhere. It's in this church. It's out there. That beautiful snow, man. It's been, it's been beautiful. That, that, I call it pure white. You know, just clean, cleanliness and new. What a great representation of mercy that God says, look, I'm going to cover you in this blanket of white. I'm going to be merciful to others. When we focus on ourselves, it becomes hard to focus on what God's calling us to do. And then the idea of love starts getting twisted because love becomes self. We love people. If you're blessed this morning to love someone, you tell them that every day, and amen, God bless you. That's what love. love is so important in our faith, and the world will try to. To twist that and say, no, there's rules and regulations, and you can't like this person or that person. No, God says for us to love everyone. To have mercy on everyone. That's different than changing what we know. Maybe our heart's too hard this morning. Maybe we feel our heart is too hard this morning, but God changes the heart to a heart of passion. You the laughter in that other room? Come on. Right? Yeah. Come on. It's a good thing. I'm not knocking. I mean, we hear the laughter of children playing with no agenda and just being in the moment, making friends. You see a scroll all the time. When did you lose it? When did it become about self and not others? As Christians, when did it become about man? I need to do it on my own. My need to not be met. Instead of, maybe I'm just going to take a break for myself and just go talk to someone. Let's go share the good news of God. We all have that in common in this room. We can start talking about God and have a conversation. Amen to that. Sometimes there's people in the world who need that mercy who want to talk, but they have no one to talk to. Hey, be kind. So, what makes you so bad, brother and sister? I got God in me. Simple as that. As an author, he's a Christian author, and he wrote this. The Christian life is supposed to be the very essence of simplicity. Without mercy, we try to complicate it. We try to love without mercy. We try to love ourselves and others without mercy that God has given us, and then it becomes complicated. Then you start putting up the red tape, as you will. Start limiting God's mercy. God's mercy was there when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. God's mercy was there when King Saul started falling and David arose. He was there when Paul was doing his thing and he was able to pull him out of it and say, son, you guys are doing this now. The kingdom business time. And there will be situations in our life that if we're not obedient and we're merciful, we're going to find ourselves in a predicament where God's going to have to pull us out and it's going to hurt physically. And it's going to change us and we're not going to be ready and we're going to be confused. But as long as we are showing mercy in ourselves and others and doing what God is doing and being obedient, then we'll be ready for it. Wow, God wants me to do this. Something that I could never do in the past. But I can do it now. You know what, dude? 
You clearly need to get on the off ramp before I do. See you later. Come on. You know that person? You hurt me. Maybe you didn't know why, but forgive me. Maybe we won't be best friends, but I forgive you because when we hold that unforgiveness in our heart, it's heavy. It's ugly. It's nasty. And then, like when the heart does, we start pumping that everywhere else in the body. You start seeing yourself change. The world starts seeing it. And we're no longer examples of mercy. We'll become examples of the enemy. The devil hates us so much because we give him the choice to follow him and to have mercy. He will do anything to knock us off the path that God has sent for us. Yep. Lucifer messed up once and God cast him down. How many times do we mess up daily? We see mercy in our lives because God is good. The spiritual warfare that we're having when it comes to love. Love is God. We, we are called to love one another. That's why Adam and Eve had each other. Childbearing. Generations of generations. The Israelites being saved by grace and mercy. Men being changed to do God's will. Fishermen. Um, I feel like they call them a zealot, but like a radical man. Uh, tax collectors are all changed to do God's will. That's not good to excuse. God wants to use us as examples of mercy and testament of mercy. Church, we can get lost when we're not being the light. That light shines the brightest in the darkness. You gotta flicker and start leaving us where we're supposed to go. And that's what Christ is in our lives. We have to choose what we need to be a flicker or a burnt flame. Choice of ours. Peace and love. What we love is on earth is easy to love, but to show mercy. Only through the grace of God do we understand what that is. Colossians 3 12 through 13 says this Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against the other, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. What did the force say? Being selfless did not happen overnight. It takes time. But we're not alone because we get to build each other up. We're not alone because we, we have stories of great men and women of the Bible who have gone through things we have gone through. And when they lean on Jesus and they lean on God, we know the outcome and it's victory. The song said earlier, it's victory. But we also know the outcome if we don't. So how do we end this happy? <laughs> We're reminded that we are saved, brothers and sisters. We are children of Christ. There's nothing formed against us that can stop us walking that path towards God. There's no one in our lives that can stop us from worshiping God. We don't have to fight these battles on our own. On. The battle of people, the battle of self, the battle of doubt. We just give it to God. Come on. Now, his timeline is his timeline, and it's perfect. Don't get mad if he doesn't line up with our timeline. Don't get mad or frustrated and lose that hope and mercy if it's not happening the way we want it to. Because when it happens God's way, it is perfect. It is part of that eternal plan, and we're going to see great changes in it. We are all loved today, church. We are loved by the creator of all things and the universe. And he just wants a relationship with us. He is so merciful that he calls us, shapes us, and sends us to do his will. We are chosen people of Christ this morning. And with that, we get to rejoice and hold our heads up high and be that example of how good mercy is. Because without it, you get the rest of the world. Thank God we are different from this world, you know? Let's give us some praise. <laughs> At this time, um, we are going to close out the prayer, and then we'll say goodbye to our online folks. No! If you can just join me in a quick little prayer.
Dear Lord, thank you for your merciful goodness. Thank you for your abounding love for our lives. Thank you for calling us the kingdom of goodness and the new kingdom of things. And thank you for just being so loving, God. May we remember that with love comes mercy, comes responsibility to treat ourselves and others with the same love you treat us. We love you and we thank you. Your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so if you want online, have a great day. God bless.